Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with another HLMS episode again. Let's talk about one of the most unique Gundam in the CE timeline, Blitz Gundam. Since the X200 series have a lot of variants, so I strongly suggest you to save it to watch later if you can't watch it in one go. Alright, grab your snacks and drinks. Before we start the video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell next to it. Turn on your CC sub and let's go. In case you don't know or forgot what is G Project, make sure you head back to Do Gundam's episode for some quick revision. Blitz Gundam was developed as one of the five Gundams under Earth Alliance's G project. Unlike the X100 series that we talked about before, X200 series was designed to support special systems and stealth missions. Let's move on to the special designs and structure breakdown. Unlike Dew, Strike, and Aegis, Blitz Gundam don't have any seaweeds on the head. The seaweeds design was replaced by a large sensor and mirage colloid particle releaser. There wasn't any specific backpack for the Blitz Gundam. The wing like thrusters were integrated with the body. This design was assumed to allow the mirage colloid stealth system to operate better. For the frame, X200 series only changed some of the X100 series frame design. Most of the structure remained untouched. The enlarged shoulders and thrusters were once again designed for the stealth system. Alright, how about introducing the system that makes Blitz Gundam shine? One of the most OP system in the CE timeline, the Mirage Colloid Stealth System. The reason why Blitz Gundam's colors were coded as dark color schemed was for a better stealth performance. Unlike the other four Gundams, the weaknesses were pretty obvious. During stealth mode, Blitz Gundam cannot use the PS armor, so the pilot has to choose between stealth or PS armor defense. This weakness will also mean that Blitz Gundam cannot be hit during stealth mode, otherwise it will be destroyed easily. Furthermore, due to the high consumption of energy, the Mirage Colloid stealth system can only activate for 80 minutes before Blitz Gundam went power down. Here's a fun fact, the stealth system cannot be used underwater because the particles will be dissolved. Let's talk about the benefits and activation process. First, Blitz Gundam will release the Mirage Colloid particles from the body. The particles will be held in place by a magnetic field. The particles around the Blitz Gundam will block IR emission, radio waves, and bend visible lights. This will also mean that Blitz Gundam is 100% invisible. Both visual or electronic detections are useless. Therefore, hitting the Blitz Gundam during stealth mode is really hard. The best you can do is calculate the distance and try to blind hit it. As for the forearms, each forearm has one weapon hard point. Unlike the rest of the GATX units, Blitz Gundam's weapons were designed differently. On the left forearm, Blitz is equipped with a piece of lock Glipnia. The function of this weapon is similar to Sword Strike's Panzer Eisen Rocket Anchor. This weapon will be used for grabbing, piecing, or crushing the target. After the launching was finished, the piece lock will retract through a cable which stored in the back of the weapon. On the right forearm, Blitz is equipped with Trikiro's Offensive Shield System. This is the main weapon of the Blitz Gundam. The greatest benefit is that it can switch between offense and defense quickly. The first layer is a shield, which is equipped with PS armor and coated with anti-beam coating. Offensively, the shield is equipped with beam saber for close range attacks. It can be taken out but due to the shield is fixed and linked, so taking the beam saber out is inefficient. For range battles, the shield is equipped with 50mm high energy beam rifle and free lancer dart hyper velocity kinetic energy penetrator. Each penetrator can be used as a handheld spear, but most of the time it's used as a ranged weapon. The penetrators are rocket propelled. They can penetrate the armor or detonate after impact. This weapon is fast and deadly, which makes Blitz Gundam's range game is not bad at all. On January 25 CE71, Blitz Gundam was stolen by Zaft and piloted by the youngest pilot in the cruiser team, Nico Amalfi. Along with the other three stolen Gundams, the cruiser team fought against the Archangel and Strike Gundam multiple times. Blitz Gundam's biggest achievement is using the Mirage Colloid stealth system and invaded into one of the toughest spaces, Artemis. Nico destroyed the barrier generator, shot down some Mobius, and fought against the Sword Strike. Eventually, the Archangel escaped and ended with Artemis was destroyed. After Blitz Gundam was landed on Earth, the Zala team attacked the Archangel crew multiple times. During the battle near Op, Blitz Gundam Gundam's right arm was chopped off and got kicked onto the ground by an airstrike. In the end, Nico was trying to protect Afran and his power down Aegis. Nico charged to the sword strike. Resulted Kira stabbed the sword into the Blitz cockpit. Blitz Gundam was destroyed and Nico went KIA too. The remaining right arm was later picked up by Orb where they use it to upgrade the Gundam Astrid Gold Frame. By the way, one of the librarians, Lily Vavari, she has her own custom color blitz. Her blitz is a copy of the original blitz, except the armor was changed from PS armor to VPS armor. All the pros and cons of the Lily version is the same just like the original. In the Seed RE manga, Blitz Gundam was equipped with an atmospheric set for a better battle performance during atmospheric battles. This set was manufactured from the parts on DIN. 
during flight mode, the wings will expand. On the back of the blitz, there is a pair of claws. The function of the claws was similar to the ones on Ashray Gold Frame Amatsu. The claws will forcefully discharge the energy from the target, then collect the energy and recharging blitz battery. However, I want to do a detailed breakdown during the Gold Frame episode, so let's end the weapon explanation now. Anyway, the difference for the claws is that blitz need to hold the claws to use it, but Gold Frame Amatsu is directly using the claws on this backpack. Due to the equipment was still at the experiment stage, so we don't know about the rest of the new settings and weapons. Since the stolen Gundams became a huge threat in the battlefield quickly, in order to turn the war situation around, Earth Alliance collaborated with the Asriel conglomerate to build three second generation GATX Gundams. Forbidden Gundam was created as one of the three second generation Gundams. It used the data of the X200 frame, changing the design concept from stealth attack to high speed assault. Different than the first generation GATX Gundams, the second generation Gundams were equipped with TP armor. The full explanation of TP armor is at the Buster Gundam episode. Please go back to Buster Gundam episode to learn about TP armor. Other than TP armor, there is a pair of Geschmetic Panzer on the shoulders. It's a device on the shields that will bend incoming energy to provide a solid defense. The theory of this device is to release Mirage Colloid particles to generate a strong magnetic field, making the energy to be bended to the side of the MS. The Panzer can be used in different ways. Not only it can endure water pressure and defending attacks, while Forbidden is in underwater and environment. At the correct time and standing at the correct angle, Forbidden can also bend beam attacks from the allies and let it chase the enemy. However, the Panzer cannot defend close combat beam attacks, for example, the beam boomerangs on Justex Gundam. Combining TP armor and Geschmetic Panzer, Forbidden Gundam can use them at the same time, which made its defense became really good. In order to maximize the performance, the developers studied the data from the X300 series. The result is the high-speed assault backpack. The concept of this backpack is to allow Forbidden Gundam to quickly handle close-range or long-range attack. If the enemy is closing in, Forbidden Gundam will use the 75mm series on the head, a pair of armed foyer 150mm machine gun on the forearms, and Nekoga heavy scythe to engage the opponent. The heavy scythe blade was developed by the technicians who once lived on the graveyard. The blade is very sharp, cutting through small battleships or regular MS is just a walk in the park. Also, the heavy scythe is the only weapon that can be used when Forbidden Gundam is underwater. When the target is far away and Forbidden Gundam need ranged weapons, the assault backpack will cover the upper body. Other than the defensive panzers, there is a pair of Exxon 88mm railgun. The railguns are very powerful, taking out a regular MS in one shot is not a problem. At the middle of the backpack, there is a Harris Vilga plasma induction cannon. This cannon is the only beam weapon on the Forbidden Gundam, but it's also its strongest weapon. The power is strong enough to shoot through more than 3 MP-type MS. The shots can also be bended by a magnetic field that generated between the railguns, making the cannon shots are able to chase the target. Forbidden Gundam was handed to one of the three druggies, Shani and Along with Calamity and Raider Gundam, the three Gundams first appeared during the first assault towards Orb. Forbidden Gundam used its advantages and destroyed a lot of Orb's warships. The trial team gave a lot of pressure to Kira and his Freedom Gundam. Later, Afran joined the battlefield and the druggies were getting knocked back by the cooperation from Kira and Afran. After a while, the time limit on the medicine was reached and the trial was retreated. During the second Orb assault battle, Forbidden Gundam fought against Freedom and Justice again. However, the battle ended quickly and the druggies retreated due to energy issue. During the third battle where the Earth Alliance wanted to seize the mass driver, Forbidden Gundam appeared again but the trial didn't perform much. They were knocked away by the full burst attack from Freedom and Justice. The battle ended with Kasanagi went to space and Orb self-destructed the mass driver. After the Earth Alliance went to space, the trial once again met the free ship alliance near Mendel. But the only time Forbidden actually did some damage was to melt half of the Freedom Gundam's head. At the near end, Forbidden Gundam participated in the Battle of Boaz. The druggies protected the Peacemaker team and Earth Alliance successfully destroyed the Boaz base with nuclear missiles during the second battle of Yakin Due. Forbidden Gundam once again appeared as the Peacemaker team guard and shot down a group of Saf's MS. The druggies briefly fought against the Meteor Freedom and Justice, but in the end, Forbidden Gundam was destroyed by Jiu Gundam. Shani was killed along with his Gundam. Since Earth Alliance never had any proper MS to fight in underwater environment, in order to fight against Zaf's underwater MS like Goon or Zono, the developers used the data of Forbidden Gundam, focusing on this underwater ability and expanded it. The result is Forbidden Blue. Based on the data of the Geschmetic Panzer, the developers use a similar concept and theory to convert to the underwater version. It's unsure whether the Panzers will ban beam attacks like the previous version or not. But the Panzers on Forbidden Blue are mainly for controlling the water molecules around the body, which will counteract 
the water pressure. So in other words, as long as the battery is working, Forbidden Blue can operate at different depth. However, since Forbidden Blue is a prototype, so of course there was a deadly flaw. Once the battery stopped working, the water pressure will instantly crush the MS. Due to this deadly flaw was commonly known among the military, so Forbidden Blue was also nicknamed as Forbidden Coffin. In order to protect the pilot, the materials around the cockpit were changed to reinforced titanium alloy, but it's not sure whether this change is helping or not. For the equipment changers, they were changed to underwater specified. Just like Forbidden Gundam, Forbidden Blue was equipped with TP armor, which gave a huge advantage during underwater battles. There are multiple sensors on the body, which gave a superior underwater searching ability. The number of sensors and locations are unknown, but the sensor types included IR sensors, sonars, Lorenzini sensors, and several ultra low light cameras. There is a tail extension at the bottom of the backpack. The end of the tail is an anchor, which Forbidden Blue can use it as a melee weapon or use it to change the Directions. The tail body is filled with an ultra long wave antenna and a towed sonar array, which further increase the enemy searching ability while in water. As for the weapons, the 75mm seaweed and arm foyer 150mm machine gun were kept, but they don't have any uses in water. It's mainly for surface battle if necessary. The handheld weapon was changed to a trident. The heavy scythe was increased to four of them, two of them mounted in each shield. The heavy scythes were also changed to a retractable weapon during close range battles. As for the ranged weapons, the plasma induction cannon was changed to Forno Maser Cannon. Just like Forbidden Gundam, Forno Maser Cannon is the only beam weapon of Forbidden Blue. The railguns were changed to a pair of super cavitating torpedoes canister pods, which will fire a type of torpedo faster than the normal ones. Earth Alliance made a total of four Forbidden Blue, which all four of them were equipped with Natural's OS. One of the Forbidden Blue was secretly sold to Orb's Sahaku faction by Muda Azalailu. Another Forbidden Blue was assigned to Earth Alliance's ace, Jane Houston. She participated in the second Classic Banker Sea Battle, which Forbidden Blue was performed greatly. After the testing was complete, the data of Forbidden Blue was being collected to make an improved version, Deep Forbidden. Deep Forbidden was basically the improved and simplified version of Forbidden Blue. Deep Forbidden featured a further reinforced cockpit, and the shields were added with a backup battery to prevent being crushed by the water pressure. Since Deep Forbidden is an MP-type MS, so some of the weapons were removed. The 75mm series and arm foyer 150mm machine gun were removed, but the forearms and legs were added with weapon hard points which means Deep Forbidden can carry other equipment if required. For the tail extension, the anchor was removed, which means the tail is purely for enemy searching. Deep Forbidden was handed to Earth Alliance's ace like Jane Houston. With the great skills from the ace pilots, Earth Alliance successfully gained an advantage during underwater battles. However, no further battle records were found due to the fact I can't find the Destiny Astray manga. The final MS in the Forbidden Blue line, introducing the Forbidden Vortex. In a nutshell, it's basically Deep Forbidden's improvements combined with Forbidden Blue's weapons. The appearance is identical to Forbidden Blue, except the shields were using the ones on Deep Forbidden. Forbidden Vortex is just a combination from the two previous models, except now it's safe to dive and operate underwater without any crushing issue. It's unsure how many Forbidden Vortex was made, but a group of them was assigned to protect the heaven space during CE-73. However, despite the performance on paper, it's pretty outstanding. But when it was fighting against Zaf's amphibious MS, it didn't perform really well, neither overwhelming the enemy team. Although Forbidden proved its own strength on the battlefield, but Earth Alliance was keening more on Blitz design and not willing to let the precious data to be wasted. The developers used the data of Blitz Gundam, combined the data with 105 Dagger's parts and frame. The N Dagger N was born. Despite the base is 105 Dagger, but N Dagger N is not an MP type MS. The position of this MS is mainly for special task force, like stealth missions, sneak into the enemy base to steal information, kidnapping a specific target, or assassination. Its name included two N. One N is standing for Neutron, the other N stands for Ninja Works. Let me explain the story behind Ninja Works. And Dagger N was developed during the CE-71 war. However, by the time And Dagger N rolled out from the factory, the war already ended and both factions signed the Junius Treaty. The treaty banned Mirage Colloid System and nuclear technologies for both factions. Earth Alliance declared that they dumped any projects related to the violation, but the reality is that they kept the development of And Dagger N. Since And Dagger N is a top secret, so most of the soldiers don't even know it exists, except the senior officers. All the developers, pilots, or any staff who related to N Dagger N project needs to keep their mouth shut, which is why the related people call themselves Ninja Works. So, why N Dagger N is a top secret? During the CE 71 war, 
Blitz Gundam was very famous because of its Mirage Claw stealth system. However, the activation time is limited, which this issue became a huge weakness. In order to allow N Dagger N to variatically become stealth forever, the developers used the leaked data and equipped the N Gemma Canceller, which means it's powered by a nuclear reactor. In an era where MS are forbidden to use nuclear reactors, N Dagger N's abilities are truly deadly. Alright, let's take a look at the weapons on this secret MS. Just like Dagger L and Windham, N Dagger N stole one MK315 stiletto rocket propelled anti-armor penetrator on its right side skirt. The left side skirt was equipped with a long and short DESG-07D plus anti-armor sword. The sword is very strong and capable of penetrating through PS armor. On its left forearm, we can spot a pizza lock Harkenforced. It's a simplified version from the Blitz Gundam. The pizza lock cannot grab or drag the enemy. Its function is a retractable pizza lock. Fire towards the enemy and peace through the armor. The signature Chikiro's offensive shield system was changed to Sugarware offensive shield system. The beam saber and penetrators were removed Moved, they were replaced by a 70mm high energy blaster. The energy blaster is the main weapon. The muscle is bigger than a standard beam rival. It also means that the power is stronger. For tactical users, N Dagger N was equipped with 70 multi purpose launcher port. These launchers were very similar to the ones on Strike Noir. It's unsure how many N Dagger N was made. The battle records were very limited too. So far, there are four battle records. The first mission was meeting with a spy, receiving the data from Armory 1 to plan the hijack mission. The second mission deployed two N Dagger and they assisted the Armory 1 raid, stealing the data of Chaos, Abyss, and Gaia. However, when they exited Armory 1, the two N Dagger N were intercepted by a Proto Chaos. Courtney Harmus briefly fought against the N Dagger N duo before they successfully escaped. The third mission deployed three N Dagger N and one Wild Dagger. They were protecting Nibelin anti aircraft cannon from being discovered by Zaf's reconnaissance team. Very soon, the reconnaissance team was approaching. All the N Dagger N went stealth and ready to fire. However, the Gunner and Blaze Saku warriors were equipped with Mirage colloid detectors. They fired instantly and shot down an N Dagger N. Wild Dagger came to support and quickly took out the Blade Saku Warrior and Command Saku CZI. The remaining N Dagger N shot down the Gunner and Noctiluka Saku Warriors. Despite the special Tarfos protected the Nibelin, but all three of them were later destroyed by Shinasuka with his Destiny Gundam. One of the abandoned units was found by Lieutenant Takito Haya Oshidali, where Oshidali was heading to Sela's mansion. One Geogun arrived and attacked Oshidali. Eventually, the Geogun was destroyed by the anti-armor sword. Oshidali and his subordinates used the tunnel that Jio Gun made, headed to the underground vault and took a lot of metals out before the reinforcement came. After the CE-71 war, Earth Alliance collaborated with Action Industries. Action Industries started the Action Project. They remanufactured the Blitz Gundam. The reborn Blitz Gundam didn't change anything except it's now equipped with VPS armor. Based on Blitz Gundam starter, Action Industries developed the modified version, Narrow Blitz Gundam. Narrow Blitz is another violation from Earth Alliance. It has the same technologies like N Dagger N, which included N Gemma Canceller and unlimited stealth time. Again, Nello Blitz will only deploy for secret missions like N Dagger N. In order to make the stealth mode perfect, the developers remove all the beam weapons, replace them with strong melee weapons. Nello Blitz have a different idea than Blitz Gundam. Nello Blitz will now use the stealth system and caught the target off guard easily. As for the weapons, the Chikiro's offensive shield system only equipped with three penetrators. The right arm is equipped with six barrel launcher and claw. The launchers can fire different type of shell based ammunition or dummy balloons to confuse the enemy. When the enemy is closing in, the claws will open and caught the target instantly. The biggest feature on the level Blitz is a pair of variable arm unit on the backpack. They are powerful enough to crush through PS armor. Other than grabbing and crushing, the arm units can be crystallized and reflect the incoming beam fire. It's similar to Agatsuki's armor. However, the crystallized form will degrade the internal parts every time when it reflects one shot. So the reflect attack is very limited. If the pilot is not being careful, the arm units will disassemble after the parts became enough degraded. Nano Blitz got one deploy record when Phantom Pain sent Russell Aegis and Nano Blitz to eliminate the Martians. Ernst Brahim came and kept hitting provocation on Emilio Project with his turn Delta. Emilio went berserk and Ernst defeated both of them. Later, Junk Guild retrieved both Russell Aegis and Nano Blitz. Ran some examinations on them and what happened after it was unknown. Action Industries not only improved the first generation GATX series under the order from Chief Engineer Vivi, Action Industries also created the free 
modified second generation GATX series using Forbidden Vortex as the base, combining the original Forbidden's weapons and abilities. Rot Forbidden Gundam was created. The idea of this upgrade is to maximize mobility, defense, and offense. First, all the weapons from the original Forbidden Gundam were kept, except the heavy scythe turned into a double scythe. In order to further increase the offense abilities during high speed assault form, the developers added a pair of diffuse beam cannon. Secondly, the defense was further improved. The Geschmetic Panzer was upgraded and expanded the magnetic field, allowing it to block stronger beam shots. Originally, the developers were going to put four panzers on Rot Forbidden, but the energy consumption was scary, so this plan was scrapped. Lastly, in order to carry all the weight without dropping too much mobility, the developers increased the thruster outputs and added a pair of extra thrusters on the legs. About the strategic users, Rot Forbidden will always launch with Blau Calamity and Gelb Raider. The three Gundams will be controlled by AI-80 and Trial System. Most of the time, Rot Forbidden will be the shield of the team and playing Vanguard. The first battle is a trial system testing, where the three Gundam ambushed the Destiny Impulse R and D Adaga. The battle ended very quickly as the three Gundams forced the Destiny Arrow Silhouette ejected from D Adaga. Destiny Impulse R escaped with the Destiny Arrow Silhouette from D Adaga. The second battle was at the Action Industries, where a large group of D Adagas were attacking the factory commanded by Destiny Impulse R. Vivi ordered the trial team to fight against the D Adagas. He piloted the Astray Turn Red and took the Hyperion GL and GR to protect his Astray. Law joined the battle with his Astray Red Dragon. The trial team, Hyperion, GL, and GR successfully protected VV and Law. Very soon, they used the gap between the D Adagas and destroyed the Destiny Impulse R. One week later, Rock Forbidden. Blau Calamity and Jelp Raider were destroyed by Astray Red Dragon. Law earned his ticket to challenge the Astray Turn Red. The battle ended with Law won Vivi's challenge. One of the mysterious organization, Librarian Works, was also developed and improved the original Blitz Gundam. Librarians collected the data of Blitz Gundam and Astray Girlfriend Amatsumina. The result is Nebula Blitz Gundam. The word Nebula means fog in Latin, meaning the Nebula Blitz Gundam will attack people without being seen, making the opponent feel like he or she is in a fog and confused. Unlike other Gundams from Librarians, Nebula Blitz is mass produced and there is a total of 20 of them. Allow me to briefly explain the pilot. Lily is an original carbon human template. We never know who assigned the Lily clones to the Librarians. In the CE world, there are different Lily in different factions, but there is 20 Lily assigned to a player referee. Each Lily was programmed with quantum communication system, which means she can detect the enemy without looking at the MS screen, fast to reflex and hitting the target with high efficient. However, each Lily is programmed with different personalities, so some of them will be calm and some of them will be mentally fragile. Since each Lily is programmed with quantum communication system, so all the Lily can perform a special move through the Mirage Colloid stealth system, the Mirage Colloid teleport. As for the technology changes, Nebula Blitz featured revised leg joints. The head was added with enhanced communication system and additional slits to improve the cooling system. By the way, there is an arguable part, since there wasn't any right answer about whether the armor is PS or VPS armor. So let's say it's hard to design. For the weapons, Nebula Blitz inherited the weapons from Blitz and Astray Goldframe Amasumina. Just like all the Librarian MS, Nebula Blitz can use striker packs. The unique striker pack is called Magano Ikutachi Striker. For the Blitz weapon part, there are three spare penetrators to reload on the right side skirt, which means Nebula Blitz can fire six penetrators in total. On the left side skirt, there's a Sumoha no Tachi triple claw. It will share the same hard point on the left forearm, so Nebula Blitz can manually switch between the piece lock and triple claw. For the backpack, Nebula Blitz is equipped with the exact same pair of Magashina no Hoko Harpoon and Maga no Ikutachi energy absorption claw. So, when Nebula Blitz is attacking the target, it will shoot the pizza lock and harpoons out at the same time, providing a free direction attack. When closing in, it will use Mirage Colloid Teleport, Mirage Colloid Stealth System, and the Energy Absorption Claws to drain the enemy's battery. In the first battle, Uno attempted to test Lily's strength with his custom Jin High Maneuver Type 2. However, he doesn't know that he was actually fighting a bunch of clones. Multiple Nebula Blitz took their turns and slowly melt down Uno's Jin. The battle ended with Uno's Jin was severely damaged. The second battle was dealing with with Law Gui under Supreme Librarian's order. Lily defeated Law very easily with her clones, but Law didn't die due to Prayer's order. The third battle was together. Prayer sent six Nebula Blitz to chase the Mirage Frame Second Issue and Gina, who disobeyed the order. However, Gina quickly figured out the Mirage Colloid Teleport trick and destroyed all six Nebula Blitz. Another team of five was sent to deal with Law Gui again. Law spotted the weakness of the teleportation and shot down a Nebula Blitz. The other 40 Lee was retreated. 
Law also saved the injured Lily. After a while, the four Nebula Bliss was back to attack Junk Guild, but Law was ready this time. One of the Nebula Bliss was defeated by Van Saver and Goldframe Amatsumina. The rest of the three Nebula Bliss got their battery strained by Ashtray Reframe Kai's claw form. The four Lily was rescued by Junk Guild, and they became members of the Junk Guild too. Thanks for watching the Bliss episode. What do you think of the X200 series? I'm sorry about this episode was delayed for two months, but I'm back from the break. Let's upload more videos. Now, if you like this video make sure you like subscribe and hit the bell next to it to get your notifications if you have a particular request for an episode comment down below too donation link is in the description and i will see you in the next video goodbye